The Chief Investment Office called the latest house view the next stage. The next stage refers to the evolution of the artificial intelligence trade in Q2 and central banks potentially starting to cut rates at the end of the second quarter. What does all this mean? We zero in on the most interesting and trending investment ideas right here on UBS Trending. Welcome to UBS Trending. I'm your host, Ainsley Carbone, filling in for Anthony. Jason is back in the studio along with Nadia to break down the latest trending house fee report. We're going to start by continuing the conversation around our optimized tech exposure message and focus. This one's still buzzing. We've had it around for a little while now. And we're going to be expanding on a new message and focus, opportunities beyond technology. So Nadia, we'll start with you. If you don't mind, please spending some time just giving a high level overview of the message and focus optimized tech exposure and just tell us some of the ideas that you have around it. Yes, you know, I think this is one to continue to emphasize and what does it really mean? It's going to depend on the investor's exposure and allocation to tech. But in its essence, it means having a healthy exposure to tech and also making sure that exposure is diversified and not just limited just to a handful of mega cap tech companies. So let's further unpack that. You know, global tech, primarily U.S. tech, is up over 90 percent since the October 2022 bear market low. And while that might seem like a lot, we do think that there's room for even more upside. In fact, this is why we also have a tactical preference for U.S. tech. We think that this is a sector that will see very healthy earnings growth this year, um, nearly 20 percent earnings growth, better than any other sector out there. But it's not just about that. It's also about the longer term opportunity. There's a lot of innovation in the space, particularly when you think about artificial intelligence that is going to have, you know, wide reaching implications and really transcend and permeate many, many other industries. In fact, the AI revolution is here. And when we think about it, we believe that AI global revenues will reach over $400 billion by 2027. That is 15 folds time in just five years. That is huge. And so for some investors who are underinvested, and so we want to actively manage that exposure. For some of those investors that are over allocated to tax, they need to be mindful about over concentration risk. So, so it could mean um, diversifying within tech and also looking for opportunities outside of the United States. Specifically, we look to a basket of stocks that we call Asia Super 8 that we think offer tremendous opportunities, exposure to semiconductors within Taiwan, Korea, Japan, as well as AI application beneficiaries in India and, and China. Um, some of these companies are seeing better growth than some of U.S. mega cap companies. We know that Asia is sort of the heart of supply chains for many. But Ainsley, there are times where, particularly when you have a market that has rallied so much, that it can be unnerving to some investors because some might feel that they've missed out on the opportunities. Others might be questioning, should I take profits here or should I hold on for potential for more upside from here? So we think also like using structured strategies is a way to help manage those concerns. Structured strategies, they can give you upside exposure um, while at the same time managing the risk to the downside. Perfect. Thank you, Nadia. So it definitely seems like there's opportunity there, but making sure that you're not too heavily invested in that area. Thank you so much for that. So just shifting the conversation now to you, Jason. One of the new messages in the latest house view, what we've updated, it's called opportunities beyond technology. Now, on the surface, it definitely sounds fairly straightforward. But can you just let us know what does CIO mean exactly when it comes to this message and focus? Well, Nadia laid out, I think, a pretty compelling case for why technology is attractive you know, in our sectors for thematic reasons. Uh, but we also don't want our clients and our investors to think all they need to do is load up on technology. Uh, you can have a situation where your portfolio can be you know, overly concentrated. Uh, it may not be, you know, sort of have enough exposure to other areas. When I think of the overall kind of environment for, for markets right now, there is this AI kind of narrative and story that's playing out. I think of it as almost like a micro level story for individual stocks and, and sectors. There's also really a macro story that's playing out as well. 
Uh, we saw last week with the Federal Reserve at the meeting, probably more dovish than expected. That has implications for all equity markets and other asset classes as well. So just within equities, I think that factor means that you need to look beyond just that tech exposure because they're actually pretty compelling opportunities outside of it. Uh, I think it might surprise a lot of our listeners that the best performing equity market globally this year is Japan, and by a considerable amount, it's not the S&P 500, it's not the NASDAQ, uh, and even European equities have outperformed. So there are definitely opportunities outside of the U.S. tied to different themes. So if you just focus entirely on tech, and I can understand the reason why it's very compelling, you're missing good opportunities. And that's really what the message is, that there's opportunities beyond technology. Thank you. That's helpful to uh, kind of set the stage there. So with that in mind, can you just dive in and let us know some of the specific recommendations that you have? Well, we think about just U.S. equities. You know, one of the preferences we've had now for a few months is small cap stocks over large. Uh, again, it's not a negative view on large. We just think small caps are poised to you know, perform quite well. Their relative valuation is at a pretty steep discount, you know, versus large historically. Uh, that tends to kind of provide a definitely kind of a potential for balance when small kind of reverses. We think the macro environment that's going to be relatively benign, especially with the Fed now quite likely to start cutting rates in June based off of, you know, what came out of the FOMC last week, that would provide a tailwind for small caps. And if you look at the market performance literally since the press conference through to, you know, this morning, uh, you can see the, um, you know, small caps have outperformed. So that would benefit from the macro environment. Also, M&A activities picking up against small caps could be a beneficiary there. So multiple drivers why we think small cap has scope for kind of catching up. In the US, we also like healthcare as one of our most preferred sectors. There's a lot of interesting things kind of going on in the healthcare space, you know, in addition to sort of you know, kind of healthcare disruption from various weight loss drugs. So that's again sort of a thematic idea. Uh, you know, outside of the US, Nadia mentioned Korea, Taiwan. It's part of the tech exposure, but just also as kind of we're seeing signs of the global cycle, especially in APAC, like manufacturing cycles sort of inflecting. These are markets, especially Korea, that tends to be early cycle. That's an opportunity again sort of outside of, of the US. So whether it's, you know, you know, kind of thematic opportunities, you know, size opportunities or outside of the US, there's things that we think look attractive. And again, Nadia mentioned the, the idea of structured solutions. You know, the markets have done very well recently. If you want to get exposure but worried about the downside, that's also a way you can kind of, you know, add exposure but also kind of cap a little bit of your loss if you're worried about buying you know, after a big rally. Thank you. That's helpful. So you mentioned the FOMC meeting last week. Last couple seconds that we have here, can you just touch on a little bit about why that's relevant when it comes to our message and focus around managing liquidity? So we've been telling people to manage liquidity for a while, partly because we think at some point the Fed will cut rates. It's pretty clear to me after last week's meeting that a June rate cut is, is a high probability. I think the bar is high for them not to want to cut, which means those rates where you're sitting on cash or money market funds, they're going to start going lower and as soon as maybe three months. So it's been a good ride, but at some point those are going to come down. You need to think about the reinvestment risk, looking at other opportunities. You know, we've talked about two just in the equity space. Otherwise, you're going to be reinvesting at lower rates and you're going to miss out on other good opportunities. So I think it should be front and center in the second quarter as you think about that liquidity strategy. So basically, time to, the time to take action is right now in right. terms of yes. managing your liquidity. Well, thank you, Jason and Nadia, so much for joining us today. I think that's all we have time for. For more information, visit ubs.com slash views. Make sure to follow UBS on social media, whether it's LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and check out our Instagram channel at UBS Trending for UBS Studios content that you can't find anywhere else. And as always, if you have any questions about your portfolio, please do speak with your financial advisor. Until next time, I'm Ainsley Carbone filling in for Anthony. Have a great rest of the day, and remember to keep your eyes on what's trending.